the righteous shall live. The ungodly by their words and deeds summoned death. Considering him a friend, they pined away and made a covenant with him, because they are fit to belong to his company. For they reasoned unsoundly, saying to themselves, Short and sorrowful is our life, and there is no remedy when a life comes to its end, and no one has been known to return from Hades. Let us lie in wait for the righteous man, because he is inconvenient to us and opposes our actions. He reproaches us for sins against the law and accuses us of sins against our training. He professes to have knowledge of God, and calls himself a child of the Lord. He became to us a reproof of our thoughts. The very sight of him is a burden to us, because his manner of life is unlike that of others, and his ways are strange. We are considered by him as something base, and he avoids our ways as unclean. He calls the last end of the righteous happy, and boasts that God is his father. Let us see if his words are true, and let us test what will happen at the end of his life. For if the righteous man is God's child, he will help him, and he will deliver him from the hand of his adversaries. <laughs> let us test him with insult and torture so that we may find out how gentle he is, and make trial of his forbearance. Oh, let us condemn him to a shameful death, for according to what he says, he will be protected. <laughs> Thus they reasoned, but they were led astray, for their wickedness blinded them, and they didn't know the secret purposes of God nor hoped for the wages of holiness, nor discerned the prize for blameless souls.